guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com. Now today I want to share with you guys a project that I've been working on for the past few weeks. I've been wanting to set up a way to compare different types of light electric vehicles and to see which is the best for commuting and for last mile situations in cities. And so I set up the following test to compare these vehicles. Now the different light electric vehicles that I'll be comparing are all ones that you've seen in my past videos. And those include a 500 watt electric scooter, an 800 watt electric skateboard, a 350 watt folding electric bicycle, and a 1000 watt electric bicycle. Now to compare the different light electric vehicles, I performed the same commute four weekdays in a row at 8 a.m. on a commute that was about 3.1 miles or about 5 kilometers or so and passes right across the city of Tel Aviv, which is a city of about 400,000 and fairly representative of most decent sized cities around the world. The route starts near where I live on one side of the city in an area that's more suburban with neighborhood style streets then passes through the center of the city where you get into more congested traffic and city blocks and then finally pops out on the other side of the city right onto the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Alright, now let's take a look at the results as well as the quantitative and qualitative data that I collected. And real quick, I apologize for the lack of quality of the helmet cam footage. I don't have a real GoPro, I just have this knockoff AliExpress version. But it gives you the same idea. Alright, let's hit the road. The first commute was performed on the 500 watt electric scooter. The route begins on neighborhood streets. When bike lanes were available, I used them, but they quickly disappeared and I wound up just using the road, which is perfectly legal here as long as you follow traffic laws. The scooter is limited to just 25 kilometers an hour, but any time there was traffic, I was usually passing the cars. Lane splitting is also legal here, so this is just fine as long as you do it safely. Of course, in areas with less traffic, cars were flying past me. The total distance of the trip was 5.36 kilometers, the time was 17 minutes and 41 seconds, and the average speed was 18.43 kilometers per hour. As the first contender, the scooter sets the bar to beat. Next up was the electric skateboard. Now this is also how I discovered that apparently I hold my head at an angle while I ride a skateboard, so I apologize for the crooked helmet cam footage. Now first and foremost, the electric skateboard was probably the most fun of all the commuter personal electric vehicles that I tested here. It just feels really cool to basically surf down the street and you can easily slip between cars because the board is basically as wide as your feet. And while I do love riding my electric skateboards, I can't seem to push the thought out of my head that I'm really just one mistake away from eating through a straw for the rest of my life. Which is probably a good thing to remember because these are not the safest way to commute. In the end though, the skateboard was faster than the scooter, covering 5.23 kilometers in 16 minutes and 28 seconds for an average speed of 19.3 kilometers per hour. And with that, the electric skateboard surpasses the electric scooter. I'm a bit biased because I've been riding e-bikes for years, but e-bikes definitely feel more comfortable to me. They're more stable than scooters or skateboards, yet still nimble enough that I can squeeze past cars and around obstacles, even in places where mopeds can't fit. The downside of these European legal e-bikes is that they top out at around 25 kilometers an hour, or 15 miles an hour, so you don't really get a chance to go too fast. However, the increased stability meant that I could maintain higher speeds for longer than the electric skateboard or scooter, resulting in slightly better performance. The folding e-bike covered 5.41 kilometers in 16 minutes and 6 seconds with an average speed of 20.42 kilometers per hour. And that means the folding e-bike just barely slips into first place with the new fastest time. Now it's time for the big leagues. My 1000 watt e-bike gets up to about 47 kilometers an hour or 29 miles per hour and so whenever I have enough room to really open it up I can take off and make quick time. Once I get back into traffic though, the 1000 watt e-bike doesn't make too much of a difference because I still have to slow down to safely pass cars. But that extra speed makes a big difference in the end, with the 1000 watt e-bike covering 5.46 kilometers in 12 minutes and 13 seconds for an average speed of 27.1 kilometers per hour. That is definitely enough to put the 1000 watt electric bike solidly in first place. Now of course I did only perform each of these commutes once, and so things like different amounts of traffic or stopping at different numbers of red lights could have skewed the results a little bit. And I didn't want to spend months, you know, reproducing each one of these a dozen times to get an average, but to increase the scientific rigor at least a little bit, 
I decided to perform the final test with the 1000 watt e-bike four more times so it would be five days of testing that I could average. And looking at these five tests, I can see that the range is about plus or minus 9% for the total commute time. Unfortunately, that means that the first three vehicles here all essentially fall into the error range of each other, and I don't think I can say that any of the three is significantly faster. Of the three, the e-bike felt the most safe and comfortable to me, but I do have more experience on it, and comfort is of course subjective. The 1000 watt e-bike is definitely statistically significantly faster than the other three methods of transportation, but I found that you do need to make sure you're careful when using that speed, and that you have good brakes for stop and go city riding. Lastly, just for fun I took a taxi on the same route, and even though I thought the driver was going to kill me based on the speed and risks he took, we still somehow only got there in 21 minutes, showing that a car is definitely slower than all of these personal electric vehicles when it comes to city commuting during rush hour. Now if you guys would like to see a write-up I did on this experiment with even more details, you can check out an article I wrote for Electrek, and the link is in the description below this video. Alright guys, I hope that video was interesting for you guys, and lastly, time to choose the randomly selected commenter from my last video who will win one of my books, either the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, DIY Lithium Batteries, or DIY Solar Power. And the winner is... XDM50 Congratulations! Just send me a private message here on YouTube and let me know which book you'd like and where to send it. And for anybody else who wants a copy of my book for free, you could win one by just putting a comment below this video, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And for anybody else who doesn't want to wait, you can always find my books on Amazon. Alright, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.